What's up, potheads and political junkies? You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live from the Treating Yourself Expo, the third annual Treating Yourself Expo here at the Metro Toronto Convention Center in beautiful Toronto. This place is awesome. I'm sitting right now with Mr. John Conroy, who many of you watching may know. Uh, John is quite a famous cannabis lawyer here in Canada and has been part of all kinds of pivotal cases, been working for many years in our community. John, great to have you on the show. Thank you. And of course, I'm a big fan of your work, and I think everybody in the cannabis community is. You've definitely done a lot of great stuff for us. Oh, thank and I, you very I much. wanted to talk to you about you were here speaking at the TOA Expo today. You're one of the featured speakers. What was uh, what was going on there? What were you talking about in your speech today? And I'll move this down a bit. Well, I uh, started off with uh, some of the history in terms of what's been going on. I've been involved for uh, well practicing law now for 40 years, so it's been a long time, and I've been involved in the. Uh, movement uh, since the mid 70s so uh, uh, I've seen a lot of things go back and forth over the years and uh, some progress and then some regress right and uh, you know you look at uh, things and you wonder just how uh, how do we change people's attitudes I mean it's an attitudinal thing that we're up against uh, and uh, logic and reason and rationality doesn't seem to uh, hold sway, certainly just talking to people and telling them facts. Uh, you know, we've got tons of that now in the media and on the internet, and uh, yet we still have people who want to introduce mandatory minimums, yeah. you no know, kidding. for people for growing marijuana, the suppliers. And it just seems so stupid to, uh, to do something like that, which obviously will increase the, uh, it squeezes the supply and pushes the price up, right. makes it more valuable. When you're in a black market, people can't go to the courts to resolve disputes or to other mediators and so on. They're stuck and they resort to violence. Historically, that's what's happened. That's right. It's the cure for their fear of the drug, uh, like... It used yes. to be their fear of alcohol, or an actual harm caused by alcohol, which we don't have from cannabis, right. uh, that led to original prohibition, and it was their realization that the cure was worse than the disease yeah, no kidding. that led them to repeal it. Right. And, you know, they go on about gangs and so on and so forth, and they try more and more repressive things, but all they do is make the situation worse, instead of realizing that, you know, the joke uh, after they uh, repealed alcohol prohibition was that people said how hard it was to get a drink on Sundays. Uh. You know, under our current marijuana prohibition, they want to stop kids from getting it. Well, kids just have to ask. To, was it the Sky Train station? Oh, sure. Or, you know, oh, it's easier for kids to, to get that than alcohol. If, if exactly, yeah. alcohol, you got to corrupt an adult to get at. It. <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, you know, it, it, there is better control of a market where there's a demand through regulation and taxation than through prohibition. Right. And it doesn't matter what drug it is, prohibition does not work. It right. exacerbates, it makes the situation worse. It's great for us lawyers, <laughs> it's great for the prison administration, right. it's great for criminal justice and keeping everybody busy, but it's not really. It, it plugs up the courts. It's a waste of valuable uh, resources. Judges shouldn't have to make decisions about these sorts of things. They should be making decisions about serious things where real harm is caused or right. potentially caused. You know, so the whole thing is just so absolutely silly. And you, you mentioned a, a point there about the fear being a motivator of these laws. And, you know, I, I think you're right because these sort of moralistic things that have been passed down for years, prostitution is illegal. And now, of course, in Canada, we've just had some changes there. I grew up in Africa as a kid, and uh, my father was a consultant on the growing of tobacco, of all things. Oh, no way. And uh, I knew from what he said and things that I saw that many Africans, not all, but many Africans smoked uh, cannabis. And the sky didn't seem to be falling in. Uh, there was no particular concern. So I didn't really experience, I mean, it wasn't something then that, that I was involved in or anything in those years. I didn't uh, experience the whole scene until the 60s when I came back to Canada. Mm -hmm. But um, again, you know, you, you observe it and you say, well, where's the problem? Where's the, yeah. you know, uh, yes. the, this downside? Sure, there are vulnerable groups. Sure, there are some people who have problems with it. But I mean, in terms of what we risk, 
and so on in society yeah. today to use the criminal it's, law. It's definitely, I mean, obviously it's when it comes to health and crazy. things like that, there's no evidence, right? Yeah. And it hasn't been. But of course, that's why you see this extreme propaganda over the years, because they just don't have anything else to, to go by, really. Well, well this, you know, this is what I was sort of thinking, that there wasn't that going on in Africa at the time, but once the 60s came in and was popular among younger people there, as well as in Canada, then this whole revival of all the old anti-marijuana stuff. But it's so weird, because when it was put in, in 1923, just moved into the schedule with no fuss or anything, right? Um, there wasn't a problem. And uh, the use didn't, there was hardly any use at all until the 60s. Right. And so, and yet they had used this uh, Janie Canuck uh, black oh, yes. candle, uh, all of that stuff, right. sort of, oh, look what's coming next, given what's happened with booze, this is the new thing. Right. And Janie Canuck was the journalist here in Canada, well, journalist, she, she, editorialist. She was a, a judge. She was the f one of the first female judges, Emily Murphy. She's one of the famous five you'll see on the hill, the statues, and so she, wow. in some respects, contributed greatly to the women's advancement in terms of women becoming people and so on. Yes. But she was in that era where they were also into such things as eugenics, and she got into this whole thing about the drug thing. So right. she was, you know... A, a, and she, was pop she wrote about it and was popular, right? And, and had a lot of negative things to say McLean's about cannabis. magazine is where it ended McLean's, up. So you right. can imagine it, it hit every household in Canada. That's and that's right. the, the f beginning of the fear for their xenophobic uh, attitudes. Yeah. You know? So that's what we're up against. <laughs> well, and it and is. So I say you've got to educate at the lowest levels. Look what we've done with tobacco, you know. Tobacco is a good example where we haven't used the criminal law in order to educate people about the harms from the use of tobacco. Right. And how to do it maybe in less harmful ways and all the rest of it. And so harm reduction uh, is, in my view, the, the only solution. Uh, we do it now with the safe injection site in Vancouver. And uh, it's far more uh, effective once you're able to reach the people uh, than anything else. Mm -hmm. Again, you're up against it having been driven into the alleys and then trying to get them to trust you that you're going to help them right. is the big problem. Yeah. So the emotions of us human beings... <laughs> Well, it's a true. hard thing to overcome. And when it comes to government, we were talking about fear as a motivator for these laws, but it's weird because our government, though they're very religious and right-wing, and I'm sure there's a lot of that fear in their base, I wonder myself about the politicians themselves. You know, we've had so many scientific studies over and over again showing that, you know, even here in Canada, we've had Senate committees, all kinds of things, saying that can more harm comes from prohibition than, than the cannabis itself. Do you think there might be other reasons with Stephen Harper and his crew, other than the fear motivator what's their motivation for these laws it's baffling uh, and I think it is this gut reaction moralistic sort of stuff with refusing to really look into it or understand it uh, because I I, I, uh, I can't believe that they would do it to support organized crime right um, you know that it's would be the last thing certainly that they would say but then I have run across situations where people who protest the loudest sometimes turn out to be the most uh, guilty. Right. But uh, that's true. Um, you know, surely somebody in there, and, and I think Stephen Harper's an economist, uh, un should understand or analyze it from an economics point of view and understand that we can save money for the taxpayers and better regulate and control this market in a positive way instead of in a counterproductive way that does damage to right. lots of people in all kinds of areas. And so, you know, they say, oh, that's just liberal uh, versus conservative. The conservatives I knew in the old days were principled people who stood up for fundamental rights and freedoms. They were concerned okay. about individual rights and yeah. so on. No, it's yet, true. When it comes to this issue is where they get twisted around and they end up, uh, you know, taking this... Uh, uh, totally inconsistent position to what they normally take right. in terms of free markets and all the rest of it. Well, and it seems to me that it might not just be on this one. It seems like this conservative party is a lot more, I mean, I would almost say, you know, they're more militaristic than any conservatives in the past. You know, and it's weird, in the U.S. and Canada, we have this new stripe of conservatism. As you say, it's not like the paleo-conservatism where they were isolationists, they didn't want the government in people's bedrooms and things like that. That seems to be gone these days in the conservatives. Now they've taken on all these negative aspects of, like, a Soviet style culture where they want to pry into your business. It's it's uh, very, very puzzling. I uh, 
okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, John, I want to thank you a lot for coming on. I appreciate it a lot. All right. It was excellent to see your speech today, at least a little chunk that I saw. Okay. And uh, I'd love to have you back on the show again. I know you're out my side of things. You're coming from the West Coast, so uh, we do we film every Friday from Vancouver. So it'd be cool to have you come down to the Pod TV studios or there I'm sometime. Setting up things by Skype and WebEx. And That's stuff. right. We have our the Skype screen technology. set up. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. Much All appreciated. Right. So, guys, I wanted to bring on Marco Renda, the founder of Treating Yourself Magazine and the founder of the Treating Yourself Expo, and he's the editor of Treating Yourself Magazine, of course. Marco, good to have you on the show yeah, here. Uh, Chris, I just wanted to, before we start, there's a little pop-up window that came up here that says your computer is at risk. Is that something we should worry about? Okay. All right. Thanks for dealing with the technical stuff. And maybe we should, I just want to move the camera a little bit. <laughs> All right, Marco, thanks for coming on, man. No problem. Excellent, fantastic. Yeah, give me one of those. So, Marco, this is the third annual Treating Yourself, and so far it looks amazing. This is a busy Friday. Compared to last Friday, how are we doing? We're doing phenomenal, actually. I, I, I believe we're close to doubling our attendance from last year for the first day. Amazing. Uh, you know, it started out first thing in the morning, and people were just... You know, we didn't even have the, the tickets or VIP tickets or anything ready. You know, they were still at the printers. He was running behind. We had all the bags ready for all the VIPs. It's not, it's not the, the tickets for the people to claim them. Right. But it was, uh, as you can see, you know, like the, all the booths, you know, uh, the vibe, the people. It, it's really chill, you know, and yes. it's a good feeling this year. It's uh, something that is only going to progress to be bigger and better. And I, I see, you know, with you guys from Cannabis Culture coming here, Pot TV, you know, with John Conroy from the West Coast, uh, bringing Dr. Courtney Hughes speaking tomorrow, you know, from California. Right. We, we're making it really <clears throat> an, a world, like an international thing, where it's not just a Toronto thing. Right. And, and glass blowers from the U.S. and other places. Yeah. And also, yeah. next year's going to be even more awesome because we got, you know, Japan and... and, and we got the European teams, we'll have the Canadian oh, team, right. and we'll have the U.S. team. So we're going to develop it into something much bigger. We're going to blow it up, as you can see. <laughs> there you go. Very cool. So, and as I was walking around, I noticed just by the amount of people that are here that it does seem like a lot more than last Friday. And, of course, on Saturday last year, that was the big day. Yeah. So it's going to be real packed in here tomorrow, I'm sure. I think it's going to be wall-to-wall -wall people here tomorrow. That's fantastic. And I was checking, I just mentioned the glass blowing. We were checking out the glass blowing studio over there. Wow, what a an achievement I have to say man I am so impressed with what you got going on over there thank you tell people a little bit about what's going on there well we have three teams uh, of three glass blowers and what they're doing is all three days there's gonna be a flame off and then on Sunday they finish their piece and the VIP judges uh, will judge to see which teams come in first second and third yeah uh, and besides that we also have the functional glass are the, the, from the finished pieces so we have a lot of the Canadian artists are, are dropping off their pieces tomorrow morning and they're gonna be on display so cool you know on Saturday is a lot more happening right excellent and so now we were talking about the co it, it is a competition right you have yes. the teams so how does that work we see them on Sunday the finished products or how tell me about that part well, throughout the weekend, you know, they're blowing, you know, they're, right. they're doing the, 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 the glass from scratch, as you can see. Exactly. So people get to judge on their technique, you know, okay. on, on, on how they work while they're together, you know, the, the, the So flow. there's a long list of criteria yeah. for the judging. Yeah. It's not just finished product. Not just finished product. Ah, very cool. And so will we get to see the finished product on Sunday? Or is yeah, that you get to finish, see the finished product on Sunday, and then um, all three pieces that are uh, everything that's being blown here at, during the competition will then be on display at the one of a kind glass shop in Toronto excellent that's your shop that's my shop yeah, yeah. for sure and right next to one of a kind is the vape the vapes vape on the lake, on the lake. Vape yeah. on the lake. and I heard on Sunday night there's a little shaker there possibly uh, it's gonna be a big shaker <laughs> oh. uh, we've closed the lounge down for Sunday night just for the after hours party so it's at no holds barred it's awesome. something that we oh, don't normally oh. do at uh, Vape on the Lake, but uh, this is a special party. Wow. And we're going to make sure it goes off That's like right. no other. Yeah, well, I, the whole thing, man, this whole accomplishment, I just think is such a grand thing. Now, this is the third annual. Have there been 
difficulties over the years. I know you've been on my show several times talking about it. And of course, we're here at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. This is like a big deal. Yeah, it's not it just easy to get in this place. And, you know, I'm a marijuana guy. I'm going to have an expo here. Can you talk about this kind of that, the struggles that you've had in achieving what you have now? Has there been some speed bumps along the way? Well, yeah, like the first year, you know, I had to come in here with a bag of cannabis and the volcano and do a demonstration for the building inspectors, you know, the fire marshal and stuff to show that it's no combustion wow and no way you know and 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 the vapor lounge they made it basically on the street level which was even d more difficult to get in because that street level anybody could be walking in so they made it so much difficult right and it just so happened that the vapor lounge the first year was the same location as the g27 meetings so i just would have wished that maybe you know we could have had the the, the expo two weeks prior and and had that you know aroma of, of all the vapor still in 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 the g20 stuff so maybe they could chill out you know and, and no kidding and, and see yeah there wouldn't have been many cops so, cracking heads yeah so like now now we got yeah lots of good yeah. vibes you know some loving show some loving so now you know the second year we were able to bring it up on on, on the main floor they they lack they relax a bit let us do our own security which kind of bomb because my volunteers just let everybody and anybody in even it doesn't matter the age right and it kind of got us in a lot of trouble yeah. and we almost lost having the vapor lounge but and who was it was it the convention center themselves that were angry yeah, about it right yeah. okay they're really anal right you I know? Bet. uh it is a government building after all and and they you know they tried to make it that medical 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 yeah and you know listen i I'm a med patient, but you know, I was I was smoking cannabis long before I became a med patient. And the thing is that most people that I know that use it that are social users are just in the closet. They're real med patients, but people don't like to admit that they're sick. They, there's a stigmatism about, oh, I don't want to be sick, you know, right. and just yeah. admit it. And you know? sometimes it's not people's business either, no. though, right? You yeah. know, if you have your own private things. Maybe the fact that the pot's making them feel better, they don't feel sick anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, like, you know, you when go. the police come to the vape on the lake, you know, when the, when the drug squad came in and, and, you know, I invited them in and they were blown away the fact that they were invited to come to the lounge. And I showed them around and I explained to them, look it, we're not here to judge people. As long as people are of, of age, what they choose to put into their body is their business, not mine, not yours. Yeah. So, and besides, it's against the law to ask someone if they're sick. It is. And it's also against the law to discriminate. So, yeah. I'm not breaking any of the laws. No, right, there you go. No, yeah. And Matt was funny because we were over there with Matt Murna and he was saying, don't they know that the cannabis laws have been thrown out? <laughs> so, you know, it's true. It's And because things are all hazy these days. I mean, in Canada, it's a weird thing. It's not really law. It's color of law. And, you know, of course, on the books, there's still things that are crazy illegal. Like even the literature here, pot yeah. magazines and stuff are still actually f illegal on the books. But it's just that none of these laws are enforced. But so. it's for seeds, you know? Right. And look, exactly. Seed how many companies. seed companies in, in, the, in the government building selling seeds? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then we have Mark Emery in jail because he sold seeds yeah like it's ludicrous it is it's selective enforcement it's the gov it just makes the whole I think the whole prohibition thing is just so the government can go after whoever the fuck they want when yeah. they want and that's you know? actually one of the reasons I am so against decriminalization because it will be used as selective as yeah. it, when some when the cops want to hassle someone they'll use that as, and everyone sure, else man. Will just be well, and that's how it's used now. I mean, Mark Emery, that's a perfect example of it. If you speak up and you're loud, the government has something to go after you on, and there you are. Pot laws come in handy because a lot of people use marijuana out there. And now, listen, I'm, I'm out there, but, you know, I'm, I'm out there more. I, I choose to do it through the courts. Yes. I, I choose to fight them in the courts. Right. And I think, you know, we move a little bit further. You know, we might not win all the battles, but we sure move further. Uh, Can you I, quickly talk about how, like, your court case was a pivotal one? Yeah. Can you quickly, just super quick, summarize what that was and how you've been fighting in the courts? Well, the Hitzik case, you know, uh, in reality, we're back to square one. You know, like we won in 2000. Well, you know, they had a year, they gave them another year to fix the program they were supposed to fix in the first place. I think it's going to be the Supreme Court of Canada that we're, we're, we're going to be getting it legalized. With Matt's case. But I think it's going to be not just with Matt's case. Uh, there's a little bit of, I, I think there's a few loopholes in, in Matt's case. Where I think there's going to be, there's some other cases on the go right now. That'll happen as well, yeah. And uh, the, the government only really takes notice when people when they're sued for monetary val value because then the, pub the general public say, whoa, 
my taxpayers are going because they screwed up. Hold on a second here. Yeah. Maybe so then you get more people involved. And we're doing that with the case against the seed case. And uh, we just got Alan Young on board to join Leora Shemish. So we're fighting. It's four years now that they've been stalling, stalling, stalling. We got an awesome all your and they still have and all the seeds. Yeah. Customs and Revenue Canada want to give them back. It's just Health Canada. And, and so you got busted when you were traveling over the border. They didn't even and but they didn't even charge me. You know, like I wasn't even charged and I, I brought back about a million dollars worth of seeds through Canada Customs. And you were never charged. Never charged. No way. So now you have to sue them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So it's not like they're coming down on you. Yeah. Wow, amazing. So I mean, we, we strayed a little bit from, from the yeah. whole thing here, but of course you've been doing this for a while now. So And of course, not only have you been fighting in the courts, but you pioneered and founded Treating Yourself magazine. When was the publication, the first publication of Treating Yourself? It was uh, in August is when I first, August 2005, 2005. And then we pretty much launched it at the High Times event in, in uh, Amsterdam. Um, prior to, it was... It's about the same time where I got raided. Right. I got raided. Like I got raided, and two months later, Mark got got in, in, in raided. Yeah. And you know, I was sending meds worldwide, and all Mark was sending was seeds. Yeah. And all they did was give me a slap on the wrist. Yeah. Uh, end up being uh, charged. Uh, I pled guilty to public mischief, misuse of the postal service without proper authorization. <laughs> wow. Well, so they let you off easy. <clears throat> I remember you were having the contests on the TY forums, and things like that sent out prizes, which often consisted of cannabis. Right. Yeah. So I being one of the people on there in the early days of the forums, and uh, so I often wondered about that, how you could just send out weed and get like... Weed, hash, oil, you know, cook it. And just right. basically only be asked to sort of, hey, cut it out. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Slap not, on the wrist, as you said. Off for seed. Yeah. You know, well, they, they didn't know you were going to be so loud, I guess. I bet if they could have seen the future, they probably would have thrown you in well, jail, too. <laughs> actually, you know, I, I, I wanted to challenge the, the hash law in the courts when they were throwing it out. Because, uh, you know, I, I was charged with hash. Like, I had like, a couple ounces of hash. I had uh, a couple baby jars of, of hash oil. And I says, hold on a second here. I want to challenge this. You know, let's... Okay, you did a deal there, but I want to still challenge this hash law. Because, excuse me, water is legal. Ice is legal and my medicine is legal. Yeah, where? If I mix it all together, how does it now make it illegal? No, it's craziness. Yeah. And so obviously the the latest court case, the Smith case, um, you know, deals yeah, with specifically be, that, yeah. right? With Kirk, Kirk Tussaw and Owen Smith there. Um, he had a win there, though. There, of course, now it's being appealed. The bakery caper in Victoria, BC. Yeah. So there are court cases coming along where we're battling the stuff out in the courts. Of course, that's really our only, our last bastion of hope because our conservative government is a dictatorship and they're crazy. The one thing I, uh, yeah, the one. The one, <laughs> the, one, the one thing I really worry about within, on the, deck, within, within the Supreme Court is having minions of Harper. Yes. On, uh, oh, yeah, there. he's appointing his judges yeah. and doing that kind of thing. And that permanently changed things. Yeah. You know, those guys will be around for a long time until they die, I think. Is that, is that well, right? you know, I, I believe that in, in some ways that we should maybe do like the American system that we vote the judges in. Yeah, elected judges. Elected judges. Yeah, it's different. You know, if they well, screw and same up, with the Senate. Know? We have a Senate that's not yeah. elected here in Canada. Our for, our actual governing body that's not elected and it's appointed by the Prime Minister. Yeah. Yeah. So of course Stephen Harper stacks the bench of the the Senate with the guy his guys he likes. Yeah. And same with the courts. But we need to have more people that are going out there, coming out of the closet and fighting for the cause. Like, listen, we, we have, you know, we, we have six radio stations been advertising this event. Yeah. And I got and the a few most here in the building. And the, yeah, they're here. At, and the most calls that I got that blew me away was from uh, 96.2 FM, and it's a classical music channel. No way. Yeah. So Beethoven, you know, uh, Bach, and. Those people are calling. No way. We have, and the funny thing is, you know, you go into car lots, you go into doctor's offices, and you go like, and a lot of them, what do they put on is the classical station. Right. Right? Yeah, of course. And here they are. What? Something about pot? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're getting the calls. And that's very cool. I mean, the, the, the hippies from the 60s now, we're, we're getting into uh, the, the Oh, yeah, you need this microphone. You can talk into that thing, and that should work. Oh, it's not? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just summarize what you say. Or is it? <laughs> you can hear it. Go on. 
Well, we'll, we'll talk about it. I'll have you on the in it a little bit here. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't have a microphone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Mick always has a great comment, but we just need to give him a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, why don't we go back to just a little bit more sure. about the expo for those who don't know out there. Like, how many vendors are we talking here? Uh, we got about 105, 115, mm -hmm. something around that number. And that's more than last year. Yes. Last year was a yeah. little less than that. A little less than that. Uh, the attendance this year, much higher. Just the vibe itself amongst all those, the vendors, the attendees, security, management, it's so mellow and chill it is oh you the know? security is awesome here man they're hilarious oh, yeah. these guys are really funny guys yeah. so even as they're turning people away from the lounge they're being very cool yeah you, you know, know they're like, not all harsh in your buzz or their, anything it's not their fault it's the M it's the mtcc right you know and and i like to stress that like i'm happy that they allow us in here i'm happy that they allow us to do what we do yeah but we still the job isn't over about educating about what is right and what is wrong right so I'm going to work on that, you well, know, and, and if, if we turn around and in, in a couple of years we're going to have two halls as opposed to one, I think they'll notice that. Well, and I think every year you have it, you're normalizing it more. Yeah. So once they see, you know, that every year it's coming, there's people showing up and they're, it'll break down their barriers. I think so. You know, yeah. And yeah. bringing money in yeah. exactly well and that's one thing we talked about a little earlier today and I've had you on the show talking about it before the first I mean you, you were at running at a loss for the first two trading yourself yeah. expos right you're putting in a lot of your own, your own time and money into this thing um, the first year it was a, a significant loss second year wasn't so bad and this year you think you may break even or yeah, actually make I, a profit if I break even I'm happy I don't do what I do about the almighty dollar you know that comes in the end when I'm ready to, to if I want to sell my business I'm, I've built up something that's viable yeah but I don't do it for that you know I do it to I've always stayed true to, to, to my you know with the magazine I, I, I don't take every single ad you know I don't take this fake buds I don't do you know there, there's just I don't need tits and ass in my publication to sell it right you know what needs to be in there is information meat and potatoes to get you know it's an educational tool let the patient take that to their doctor here how can you rebut this when it's written we got doctors writing in it so how can they say no it's not true just make it so it goes work works there yeah there we go yeah no it's true and I'm so happy to hear you say that kind of thing Marco because we need more of that you know when I look around here there's a lot of people who are here to make money yeah you know that's why they're here doing it yeah. but there is also and I think it, it does happen a lot there are more people who are doing what you do and who what Mark did and putting their own time and effort into this as an activist technique so using the media not just as a way to make money but as a way to actually get that information out there now you know there's many shows, trade shows, consumer shows across Canada, and a lot of activists are, are taking some information on what I've done over the years, and that's by going into events that are not cannabis related. You know, target those, you know, it, it's not like you're not preaching to the choir. Yes. You know, we do the National Women Show, we do the National Home Show, you know, and we're invited to do all their shows across Canada. Why? Because we're not selling anything. We're there to provide information, and the public that come to the booth get educated, and they come back again and bring a friend. You know, we have people that, that go to events and see us at all these events, and they come back at the following show and say, thank you so much. I got my mother, I got my grandmother, or I got my sister, you know. I showed them the magazine, I, we went to the doctor, we talked. But if, if they hadn't talked to someone at an event, they wouldn't have gotten, they would have not gone out to seek that information. Right. But because it's there in front of them, they, they were apt to open up. It's open true, arms. you got to work it in those cracks. And so, yeah. when, and it, of course, when they see a marijuana display or a magazine that talks about marijuana at one of the things that they know and they feel comfortable with, it's a way of making them feel comfortable with that too. You edge it in, you know? Well, we have a full display. Like, we have vaporizers on, on there. We have, sometimes we do trimming the demonstrations you know har how to harvest how to trim you know uh, what to cook with and we, so we do all different kinds of demonstrations and the show managers you know are, are clicking in and say cool you guys are legal no problem you're not selling it you're not handing it out do what you want and you go to a lot of these expos as you say you've, and you've been to a lot of the cannabis ones yeah. and I was gonna ask you about um, how did you want to do things? I know you probably there's a lot of that you wanted to take from those expos and do something similar. But what was it that you wanted to do differently than those expos? Did you have something in mind that you saw that wasn't, or you wanted to do that wasn't there? Um, 
not blaring music in every corner. Uh, uh, smart. Naked tits running around, you know. <laughs> um, organization, that's the first thing. You know, move in, move out, it's got to be smooth. You know, just because we use cannabis, we shouldn't be running our business like dumbasses. Plain right. and simple. Bunch you know? of stoners. Bunch of stoners, yeah. you know. We we have to do we have to show the public that this is a viable this is a viable industry that there's money, ta uh, billions of dollars in tax revenue can be raised from here. Yeah. And this is the best way to do it in a convention, you know. And eventually, I hope that we you know are able to take it across Canada. Oh, that'd be fantastic, man. Yeah, you were talking about that a little earlier. Yeah, that would be really cool. Looking at Abbotsford cool. and British Columbia. Right? Wow. We're looking well, at. we would love to have you out on that side of the thing here. Oh, man, that'd be very cool. I wanted to also just ask you about uh, everybody who's here today. Do you have some favorite booths or favorite things that you've seen today? Any Anything that stands out to you that you wanted to say is really cool or well, anything? Well, my favorite booth is the marijuana testing booth. Ah, yes. I haven't been there yet. Explain that one for us. Well, I brought up the folks from California from Steep Hill Labs, and we're setting up, testing everyone's cannabis. They want to come in. We're charging $50. It's right. the they have the gas deal. chromatograph yeah, there. Yeah, so, which actually so tests everything. The so that's one of my favorite because, you know, that's something that we didn't never had available to us. You know, right. like, how, where, where are we going to get our, 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 our medicine tested? You know, like, we need to have that available to us. And I, I like to see. I like to see that on a daily, like, at a storefront where, like, an actual business where people can go and take their cannabis and say, here, tell me, you know, because as a yeah. patient, you know, listen, I don't smoke one strain. I have several strains. You know, I, I have yet to find my holy grail. Yep. Do, do the people get a printed uh, copy of that? They get a, they get an emailed copy. Uh, they get it emailed, and I believe they are doing a printed as well. That is very cool. And it's it's uh it's it's uh not just bud. You could also do extracts as well. Oh, wow. And and so they're showing you that basically the THC content or the content of CBD, the CBD, the, the CBD, active yeah, cannabinoids yeah. in it. Yeah. Now you, they need a, a gram, gram point two, but you get it back. You know, it's not like they take it enough that you've <laughs> lost it. You know, like right. they test it and then they give it back to you. Right, and they grip pre-ground. I heard they yeah. grind it up, and then, yeah. Oh, that's very cool. So we're gonna have to check that one out. That is gonna be amazing. Now it does cost something to the people $50. who are fifty dollars. Fifty dollars, right? Yeah, but hey, that's worth it. If, if you're like a grower and you want to yeah. test your strain out, man, I bet there's a hundred and fifty people here right now who are like dying to go over there and a see. A lot that. of these seed breeders, yeah. you know, they yeah. would, you know, they would love to take all their. Totally. Well, where do you find that? Usually, where are you gonna find out what your product really is kicking it? Unless you live in California, nowhere, yeah. right? The government stops us from doing that. Right. Yeah, no kidding. You have to. So you were talking about you'd like to see a business like that. Is this something that you might have? You're a bit, an entrepreneur here. Are you thinking um, of future plans I hear or? it is already in the works that there are Canadians involved that are looking at uh, bringing it to the forefront and and doing it. And people that I know, people I work, you know, work with. So I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see more than one person is actually looking at doing this as a viable business. No kidding. You know, because let's face it, it's not just compassion clubs out there. There's growers. There's breeders. You know. Oh yeah, it's need. amazing. Yeah. No, and it's and as you said, there's just so much potential in this movement to make money. I mean, t the the business side of things is huge. Yeah. I just saw I saw a little pamphlet for the uh, the Skunk magazine thing going on in Jamaica, where they're setting up with the Hotbox Cafe. They've got a business going on there in Jamaica now, which is like a resort for weed <laughs> kind of thing. So it just seems unlimited to me. You can take nearly any concept and weedify it. You know. Well, you know. The one thing we have to be very careful of, though, is those that are just getting into it just for the sake of the almighty dollar, because it will also take away from what we've worked to achieve for the quality. So, we, we yes, we want to make it into business, but we want that business to have quality products. We, want, we don't want to lose the quality, you know? Right. We don't want to lose the service, you know, like the customer service. It, it still has to be there. Like, you can't just say, okay, I sold you something and then not service the client. You know, we have those people in the industry right now, but they don't succeed. They're fly by nights, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that those that are in the industry, that maybe we have some sort of organization, like associations and such, where, you know, you have a growers association, you have like the, like the club association, you know, where we govern ourselves, you know, and, and we need to, we need that, you know, we need to show that this is an organized, and it's not organized crime, it's organized business. Yeah. You know, our, it's, we really yeah. need that. Well, and, it's, and it is, it's just legitimizing it 
this expo is great, I think, at doing that as well. That, it, you know, it's not just a protest or, no. you know, like the Global Marijuana March or 420 where we're all getting together and puffing down and celebrating. This is, you know, for the business community and this, as you said, it's on the radio. It's out there. And <laughs> the other, and the radio stations themselves are here yeah. and they're broadcasting all day long and saying, we're at the Pod Expo, the Marijuana Expo. So over time, it just chips away, chips away at those attitudes that I was talking to John about, the fear the of fear, marijuana. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's them out of the closet. Is that, <laughs> you know, we, the gays came out of the closet. It's about time the potheads come out of the closet. Oh, that's right. Awesome. <laughs> Mick's been out for a while, but. <laughs> <laughs> so next year, <laughs> exactly. For the fourth annual, the yes. fourth annual, are the plans started? I asked you this last year. Yeah, we already have the floor plan out and the exhibitor forums because I uh, already have a couple of exhibitors that they want a bigger booth in the front and they want to sponsor the event so they were blown this was their first year they've been here they were hesitant to come in and after they almost sold out all their products and they won really yeah. wow yeah you got to bring more i guess uh, <laughs> no kidding wow well that's very cool man i really appreciate it and as you said um next year you're planning on more uh, more of an international feel yeah. to things you're bringing glass wood from other places that's very cool and so the glass one's coming back oh yes yeah also, i've already bought all the all the equipment all the, uh, that's over there so this is going to be a third a fourth a fifth a sixth you know we're going to keep going on as long as you know as long as i'm alive and and you know i'm kicking I'm going to keep bringing, you know, uh, trying to step it up even more each and every year. And the convention center itself is totally happy with the idea of having you back in the future. Yeah, yeah, right? I already got a contract signed nice. for next year. Oh, fantastic, man. So next year, the fourth annual is going to be on uh, May 24th, 25th, and 26th. Excellent. So same time next year, same basically. Same time next year. Fantastic. Marco, thank you so much for oh, coming on, man. Much, much thank, appreciated. Thank you guys for coming all the way from BC. Oh, man, we wouldn't miss it. It's totally fun every time we come here, and we've had nothing but a blast. So we'll be back again next and year I hope to see sure. you guys tonight at the party. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. I'm sure we'll be at those, too. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Marco. Awesome. Cheers. So that was Marco Renda, the editor of Treating Yourself magazine and, of course, the founder of the Treating Yourself Expo, the guy responsible for everything that's happening here today. Um, and, and we do owe him a lot of thanks. Yeah, Mick, I want to have you on here, brother. So I don't even know what time it is. We've kind of been whizzing through things here. It's only 20 minutes in. Oh, we've only got 20 minutes left. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And wait, does this place close at 8? Yeah. Oh, so we actually have to get out of here at 8 then, don't we? Yeah. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The show's the winding doors. down fast. Oh, well, we still have 20 minutes to go, so it's not over yet. Whoa. But, yeah, we're going to talk to you, Mick. I want Matt to come on, and I'd like to have a couple other people come on Absolutely. and uh, discuss things with us. So, Mick, you, of course, have your show on Pod TV every Monday. Uh, I Opus Monday Live show. with McMahon. Pod TV correspondent. You came out for from the West Coast with us. Absolutely. Give yeah. me your thoughts on the TY so far. This is your first TY, right? This is my first TY. It is uh, by far, I'm really impressed. I mean, a big portion of today was obviously a meet and greet, you know, a lot of people that we don't get to see because we are from the West Coast. And right. So there's people here from Calgary that we, you know, regularly uh, talk to and know That's well, right. good friends. And then, of course, all our good friends here in TO and, uh, we were just here for the Global Marijuana March. Yeah, so just three weeks ago we, we were, were just here. here, and uh, to come back is just wonderful. I mean, to see everyone here, but this expo is really rocking it. Um, like like Marco was saying, I mean, the glass blowing, it's really stepping it up a notch. And Marco needs to be com be commended for the fact that he is trying to keep the. Uh, the real money out of it the commercialization really i guess if you'd call it that right and just keep it down to people doing their business you know fair and reasonably and uh, honorably oh <laughs> he's streaking <laughs> it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a ty expo without mernon his underwear that's right <laughs> oh, 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 oh we don't want to see that. that's enough of oh, that. that's gonna that's gonna <laughs> we just lost all our viewers yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think live stream just froze. That's too much for Pod TV. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, we have right. a seven-second delay. Somebody put a black bar over that thing. Uh, That's obscene. Tilt that back a little bit more. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're gonna be mooning people, Matt, you might want to try wiping your ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had Matt on the show now. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. We don't need to talk to him we're anymore. Done, we're done with that's that his now. statement for the week. Yeah. <laughs> Waxing. Yeah, that's wa a great idea. On the show. Yeah. yeah. Matt live from the studio. Yeah. 
<laughs> Rear end waxing for Matt. Yeah. He needs it. Uh, there you go. I, you know, last time he was here in his boxer shorts trying to attract attention, standing up on a chair. It, it was effective, actually. The media, yeah. all of a sudden, they're like, hey, there's a guy in his underwear, and they ran over yeah. all these cameras. Wearing a belt. It was pretty brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk to you about that when I have you on. But, but so you were you going around with your crazy GoPro on a stick on a monopod I taking some pictures. I've done some uh, GoPro stuff today. I'm going to download that tonight into my computer. And uh, so I'll have lots of room and be charged up for tomorrow's bit. And, there you uh, go. And you're uploading all that. That'll all be on Pod TV. your interviews and that kind of stuff. We'll have that all up eventually on Pod TV. yeah. Right. Uh, it won't be up tonight. You guys got to wait for a few days when we go to these events because we like to make it all perfect for yeah, you. Yeah, uh, but I still have to get back. And so my show on Monday, I won't have it ready for that, obviously. But you'll just be stepping the off the plane at that time. The following, I'll give you everything just as fresh as I have it at that point. But the following week, uh, I'll be back in the studio, of course, and we we'll, should have some videos up by then. But no you doubt. are doing your show next week. Oh, I'm doing my show. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna be getting off the plane and going straight to Pod TV. Yeah. No, I had last week off because of the uh, long weekend. I uh, don't like traveling on the long weekend on public transit, the ferry, and all that. It's just a pain. No kidding. It should be a pain in Matt's ass, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but we'll do what we can. And, uh, but yeah, we're getting the full coverage here at the oh, TY. Total, total uncoverage. Total total we uncoverage. need total uncoverage. Yes, we just got it. it. For sure. Yeah. And, uh, absolutely. <laughs> cool, man. Well, you know what? We've only got a few minutes, so and I wanted to bring some other people on. I will let you all get out of here. Awesome, thanks, Mick. Thanks Fred. for coming on, brother. Right and on. thanks for all your hard work on Pod TV. Lots of parties. We love you, oh, man. man. Oh, my pleasure. We're just getting I started. I love doing this, man. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is, we Lots actually, I think we have the greatest jobs in the world, probably. Oh, yeah. Self appointed job, I mean, you know. That's right. I just I don't do this for the money, guaranteed. And Marco's got a good point there, right? It's not for the money. No. Uh, hell no. This costs me money. But I wouldn't have it any other way because it's worth doing. Every bit of it. It's for the love, baby. It's for the love. Yeah, man. All right. Thanks, Mick. Hey. Awesome work. All right. And so let's bring this war this naked ass flinger here. <laughs> I have to wipe the screen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm feeling a little dirty now from that. You're always dirty. <laughs> It's the first time I've used the mic. I was expecting to hear my voice boom over the speakers. Yeah, yeah this where's is the Vapor Central. Where's the, where's the boom? So, Matt, this is uh, your third treating yourself. I know. And of course, you're like a staple of this place. People come here just to see you. I think actually. It's weird. I, it, it's kind of it's very honor. It, it's it's the only time where you know you you kind of treated like a celebrity, really. I know when I, I swear that's how I feel when I'm here because everybody this is our community people yep. watch the show people know us yep. and you feel like like a god everybody's no, like we love you man I don't you, feel Matt. like a we god we love you not a, I we want to like, bow at your knees no they're not I feel <laughs> like you know everybody wants to shake hands and have fun is that is that okay I think we're okay black? I, it always worries me that we've turned off or something yeah we're still good I um, um yeah it, it's just an unusual it's a different experience where a lot of people this is their one day their one year time and thing that they do once a year and they know I'm here and you know a lot of these people you have to remember are an hour or two outside of the city of Toronto coming here this is their weekend like yeah exactly so we have to try and you know even though we goof a bit and drop our pants or whatever but <laughs> we uh, he says <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I'm a celebrity. I'm allowed to. <laughs> that's gonna. That's how we. You know, I'm a celebrity. I'm celebrity allowed to. naked thing. That's you know. Goes hand in hand. More press. Yep. You don't have any st sexting photos that have made it into the papers yet or anything. No, but obviously now people will be like, Myrna just showed his ass on live stream. <laughs> that's right. It'll make the papers. It'll it be on recorded. my Bullard show. I'm sure. I did the Bullard show. Did, did you yeah. saw that? Were you, you were no, here? No, I didn't see you do the show. I I saw Mike a couple times and talked to him. Oh, yeah. I saw him come out of the. Va I keep saying this. I saw him come out of the vapor lounge and he looked totally wrecked. And he couldn't even stand. And he came and leaned on me, and he's like, <laughs> "Dude, he he came straight to me at that point, and we started doing a whole segment together." And he's like, "I just came out of the vapor lounge." I'm like, "This is why you're wrecked. so happy." He was yeah. so wrecked. He was. It was he great. Stand. Seriously, he was like, "Oh man." So Mike, and it's hilarious to have him here, man. It's it's, it's kind of cool. He was here for he did his show like News Talk 1010, the largest uh, like uh, news radio station here in Toronto, and the one hour lunchtime show is hugely popular. Mike Bullard on. It, it was great. Yeah, I did a show. You like, it was, we had that celebrity experience. Somebody walked by. I was doing the Bullard thing. I was doing an interview, and someone went, "Oh my God, that's Matt Bruno!" <laughs> nice. You know, so <laughs> that's right. Well, and Matt, why is it that people know you? What is it that you've done that's so worthy well, these days? We did uh, do it, make an effort to strike down the marijuana law, and 
you know, we a were successful a, effort. That is, yes, we were successful at destroying the marijuana law, the Health Canada medical marijuana program, and to a lot of people, it, it, people have been, been dreaming of that. Um, yeah, and, and it wasn't that. just the medical marijuana laws themselves, although that was the court case. But they threw all of the pot pr possession, possession in, in production, person, personal possession, and personal production. Yeah, and that's key. You know, when you have all these seed breeders here, as you saw us earlier today, like the series yeah. thing. Yeah, I know. I'm, so, I'm impressed to see the seed breeders and talking so openly about things, and even selling the seeds right here. Yeah. It's amazing. It's awesome. And you know, we were talking, and that my case will definitely help that business hugely. Like really big time. I mean, if you could grow some plants in your backyard or in a bedroom, like for yourself, I think that's the way to go. And I'm talking like, you know, between I, I think 70. I got caught with up to 70 at one point. And I think 70 in different states is a plenty. That's a full room, and that seems pretty fair. You know. I yeah. Think well, and so the the expo like this, we were talking about how this kind of breaks those stigmas down. Like we have the fucking radio stations here at our at marijuana expo, yep. so that can't not have an effect on the public out there. Especially the conservative radio station News Talk 1010. I mean, they're far right. I mean, they're definitely. See, not I'm not a Toronto guy. I didn't yep. know. I'd oh yeah, they're definitely. I mean, they are a very far right. Not far right extreme, but they are on the right of the dial, and for news talk, they're conservative leaners. And right, most know. radio is conservative. Sadly, no there's not a lot of progressive radio. Al Gore, what Air America? They tried it or something more. Who was it? Oh, yeah. Al Franken was in there, but didn't last, I guess, in the states. Yeah, so it's cool. And as you said, there's probably a bunch of conservative people at home listening to their radio and oh, the marijuana. Oh. Right. So that's great. Break down the stigmas. So that that's the whole thing that's going. And then people, I think the first stigma that gets broken down and why News Talk 1010 can come here, and or Q1 and Q107, I think tomorrow is that it's at the Metro Toronto Convention Center and the Metro Toronto. I mean, it, if you look at this place, this is screams uh, normal. I guess is the best right. word. I mean, this is where conventions happen in this city. Right. It's the conventional convention center. Yes. <laughs> it's a traditional spot where people go to convention. And we got to give Marco mad props for swinging this, being able to actually have this here, convince the Metro co the Convention oh. Center to let him in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it costs a lot of money to rent and undertake. I, I remember we did a couple of uh, library gigs where we did library conferences and we did a and Mark was like, even at that point, he's like, you got to do a big convention at the Metro Toronto. And like, he had the idea even then after I was doing these little library things. He's like, you got to rent. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's probably like a $100,000 rental. Yeah. <laughs> it, you, know, you, were, it, you were saying no. Yeah. You're all downplaying it. But, huh. but now look at it. I mean, what he's been able to accomplish is unbelievable. So It's pretty amazing. And there's a lot of great stuff. I asked Marco what his favorite thing was. He said the gas chromatograph booth over here that we're doing. What's your favorite thing you've seen here so far? One of them. Well... I think everything I've seen is really amazing. I mean, we see uh, the different seed readers. We saw earlier today, I took the the White Rush, and that was the best experience of the day. So That was very good. Tell people about what happened at um, the Sirius booth there. Yeah, you can see it on the, on the live stream on the repeat, but we took uh, my White Russian, which from Sirius, uh, and Thomas was like new. It was weird. And I was like, I met the guy once. Like, how can he's like, no, no. So um, I brought the White Russian to him, and he's like, wow, like, you got it. And I don't that like made me really, really happy. I'm like, oh, I'm a little. Yeah, we got all that recorded. Because I'm like really nervous. Like, I don't know. I'm like, I'll get your seeds. What if you're like, ah, you're an idiot. You <laughs> fucked it all up, and I'll never do that again. Seal of approval. Yeah. Yeah. Bring them back. <laughs> I want my seeds. Don't, back. I'm taking. Take down all you're your videos. Us a bad name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Hilarious. did not happen. So that was very cool. I was impressed. You had goosebumps. Literally, you showed me your arm and you were all goosebumped out. So that's you should be proud of that, man. That's pretty cool. So we'll go to the gas well, thing you guys tomorrow. Are pot stars. What are you thinking? Pot stars. Pot superstars. We are. And speaking of Chris Goodwin, yo, yo. one of the the major superstars from here in Toronto, throwing host in the party tomorrow night. Yeah, at like six minutes left in the show. I know. I've been trying to convince you. I'd like to see a show, the Chris Goodwin show. Oh, that the would be Chris Goodwin show. The Chris be Goodwin cool. show. That would be we'll very cool. Be capitalism and freedom. Uh, That'll be yes. fine. <laughs> That's right. Tuesdays at have the ghost seven thirty. The guests. <laughs> I'll do a show soon. Tuesdays at seven thirty. The Chris Goodwin show. <laughs> no, actually, you know, it's, it's Chris and Aaron Goodwin show. Nah, that's what I, I said. It'll be called the Goodwins. The Goodwins. <laughs> 
The so, good wins. So, Chris, on when you have everybody in town like this, is this you're, of course, the manager of Vapor Central VC, where we have our Pot TV Studios Toronto. But when the the expo is here, is that good for business for you guys? Does it change anything? Are you guys? You see a lot of friends from other places, I guess, but. Well, like McMahon was saying, sometimes it's, you know, it's not always about money. In some cases, it actually costs us money. You know, on a normal event day, we'll just, uh, we'll charge everybody 10 bucks a head. Right. You know, on, on an event expo, you guys get a lot of VIP treatment. So, <laughs> although I'd like to still say I'd like to charge everybody, make it fair, and, and not, you know, not lose our shirts over a lot of events. In some cases, when you start letting in 50 to 100 people, and there's still Hydro, still the building, still the employees, still the same amount of mass, you know, so we try to contribute in our own way, too. So it's it's our way to give back too to the people that have helped us all year long and stuff and we try to do events where we don't charge people but so yes it, it can help there's uh, definitely a, a you know higher attendance at Vapor Central but Mel just texted 20 minutes ago and said boo Vapor Central's dead oh so you get both sides of it sometimes in the right. morning right before this place is open VC's packed with 50 or 100 people when they're right. having breakfast and, and then everybody comes here and everyone comes here and goes back and you know 90% of the crowd just walks in and doesn't pay and so it, it has advantages and we love seeing everybody from out of town and stuff and it has disadvantages and uh, but you know right. this is one of the events we're not involved in there's already a vapor lounge here we already have a vapor lounge no reason having a booth right um, it's true yeah you guys so we kind of just do our own thing and we do it well and you do it well all the time and it's not just around this time of year but hash mob you, you guys have been doing stuff for a long time and about it, eight years eight years hash mob and so we have two both. of that were you guys both the founders of this thing yeah but ah, see yep. i don't really know much about the history of hash, hash mob well i don't know years, what sparked it um i think we wanted to smoke out places <laughs> I think we just wanted to smoke and weed we kind of needed a name of the organization that sponsored smoking out places yeah so it was a tribute to our friend David Malmo Levine but the word Hamilton hash mob worked such alliterated it, it just rolled off the tongue so good Hamilton hash mob that it just <laughs> stuck and then and you moved to the big city and things had to change, I guess. And then, now we just dropped the, the location or, and then we just call it a hash mob. Well, all of a sudden people started opening up like Oshawa hash mobs. Oshawa hash mobs and oh, there's hash mobs. Yeah, yeah, we print. Well, and the rally in um, Amsterdam this year for the against the wheat pass was called a hash mob. Right, that's very cool. Oh, so, and you guys were going to go outside of the, you were talking to, uh, to the uh, Amsterdam folks uh, about actually having something outside the consulate there. Or outside. Yeah, I think we should have a, a, a Netherlands uh, route at the Netherlands consulate there at Young and Dundas. Awesome. This is where they're located. Inside smoke the Eaton Center. Smoke out Amsterdam inside the Burn Eaton Center. <laughs> Burn a weed pass. Uh, and I think that would be kind of neat in solidarity because... Uh, Let's all be honest. Uh, Amsterdam is where we all like to want to go or dream of going. Every yeah. pot had dreams of going to Amsterdam. No, I want to go so bad. Never been. Yeah. So Chris just got back. Saw 40, uh, 40 cafes, right? Uh, yeah, we went into over 100 shops, but at least 40 or 50 cafes that actually sold marijuana. And there's nothing like Toronto or Vancouver. Come that on. That was on your honeymoon, by and, the way. And it was our honeymoon. We also went to Paris, France and smoked out the Eiffel Tower. But nice. Yeah, uh, you know, I, it's nice seeing a few hundred cafes all in one city or all in one little city like Amsterdam. But there's something to these places, even Vape on the Lake, Vapor Central, that are thousands of square feet that hold hundreds of people. Uh, when you go to Amsterdam, and, and most of the places are 30, 35, really 50 capacity. The place that's called The Grand, I think it's the biggest one there, holds 65 people. So wow. when Vapor Central holds 200, it kind of puts things in perspective. Right. Wow. But it is a small city. Like, the buildings are small there. Like, the buildings were small. I don't know. I have no idea. Canada Post is government. They're probably closed. Yeah, we've had some Canada Post issues today. We lost, uh, we're lost some about packaging. They, they didn't send our stuff. We're working on it. But so, when Chris, when you were there, this weed pass stuff is already going on. Did you see any of that stuff? Was there talk of that or talk of how things were changing there? Well, Aaron's mentioned a few times. I haven't really talked about it. But yeah, the, I, I tweeted about it once. A few of the shops and one of the ones we kept going back to had signs up that said, uh, weed, tour, weed pass tourists not welcome. So they were implying wow. that they were not going to serve anybody with a weed pass. Ah, good. And be the day before we left, we were reading stories of the border town cities uh, were openly defying it by not, you know, bo that both awesome not here. checking for a weed pass themselves, and and then the 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 regulars of those 
coffee shops in those border towns were refusing to buy a weed pass. Right. So on both ends ends of it, right, you have the retailer, uh, the business, uh, that is supposed to be checking for a weed pass before he makes a sale. Yes. And then you have the consumer's end of it, the personal end of it, where you have to buy a weed pass before you're allowed to make a purchase or be in possession of any longer. Oh, man. So that's what, there's both ends of it, and I think at both ends it's being fought. So right. I like to see that. That's really cool. Uh, Last uh, minute of your show, Jeremiah. I know, we don't have much We got time the left. announcement. You know, I did want to bring Jody on and just quickly talk to Jody about uh, what we're doing here. Of course, got to bring the boss on here. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And we'll be back tomorrow. Th- this is just going to be one long weekend show. So oh it's not actually ending at 8 o'clock. You guys will be tuning in to- for the entire trip tomorrow. Like That's right. The repeat will be playing. With us. Okay, well, yeah, we're going to flip to VC once we leave here, so yeah. you guys will still have your live feed well, that you Expo, need so badly. The Expo is wrapping up, and I want you to call Canada Post and harass me <laughs> some more. Find out where our last boxes are. But uh, we need to find food. We don't eat all day. I know you haven't eaten all day. probably hasn't had any water today. Not you're much. No, I'm a little... Machine. There's too much to do, so... Feeling pretty tired at the end of day one of three days. So uh, some of our friends want to go out and drink and party. And we're like, do you have any idea what time we have to get up Pacific in order to be here at 10 a.m.? Eastern? Uh, no. We don't no, need sleep, no Jody. No drinking and partying for this girl. <laughs> Just food Not and like at the sleep. Global Marijuana March. <laughs> hey, the <laughs> wedding. Wedding. I only party at weddings, and I've only been to Jody one. Jody was plastered. <laughs> Open bar. Yeah, and people left their champagne around. It couldn't go to waste. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were robbing tables of <laughs> champagne glasses. <laughs> See, they closed oh, no. the bar down, and they, when we couldn't get any more booze after the <laughs> bar was closed, so... We went on a scavenger hunt. I don't hunt. drink normally. <laughs> that's the. That's like the. That's the Just only. Just spit out the, uh, the butts. <laughs> that was the only time I've been drunk in years, and it was at a wedding with friends. So. Not a problem. It was it was a lot of fun. It was good. Times. You weren't too crazy, although you were smashing glasses. I and knocked over a glass when I took my purse when I left. I wasn't that wasn't a drunken glass breaking. That was an accidental purse knocked over uh-huh. glass. Had nothing breaking. to do with the booze. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the night, yeah, nothing to do with it. <laughs> Terrible. So we uh, <laughs> we come out here from Vancouver and we've done this for the last three years, Jody. And yeah. you've been I mean you've no, been. No, I haven't been here year one. I was oh, visiting Mark in Seattle on the oh, first right. year. Yeah. But you know it's weird. I was looking through our old cannabis culture like coverage. Yeah. I was here, wasn't I? You were here. I was here, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I was. I was <laughs> like, I swear I was here. Yes, I remember you being here because you were giving me reports about a lot of the drama that went on, but it was in the past. Right. There were now, some little skirmishes so. at the very beginning. Yeah. Right. But we're all over. Look, we're in a gigantic booth at the front entrance, so things have worked out nicely. That's right. Yeah. We were tucked away in Activist Alley, but luckily we had our pot TV booth right up yeah, front here, so we just... up the escalator. was like, ooh, who's at the expo? Oh, what? That's us. It's right us. Front and center. What? We actually pot didn't TV? know we were going to have a pot TV booth we didn't know. like this. No. We didn't know. So that's a great bonus, and you guys get the advantage, too. We have a two booths big it's a giant one and we're really grateful so yeah um but you know what yeah, this is it it's 8 we're already they're gonna kick us out of here we Rab- gotta put the stuff away and yeah. yeah yeah we gotta wrap the show up but the voice from so above for tuning into pot tv and also for you guys viewing again of course we're here all day tomorrow and sunday but share the link on facebook and twitter while you're watching get all your friends online to tune in too because pot tv was the first video streaming website about marijuana ever on the internet which is incredible. 1999. Yep, getting it launched back then, back before YouTube, way before YouTube. My God, Mark spent a quarter million dollars of seed money on Pot TV when there was no video information, there was no video archive of the movement and what was going on. And Mark created all that and funded it, and all the people working for him made that happen. Enormous resource. And then when the seed raid happened and everything stopped in 2005, it didn't stop, but certainly a significant blow to us, um, we couldn't really finance Pot TV. And then YouTube came along the year after that and video just took off and now we have a stick that plugs into our computer and gives us internet it's amazing <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's great and, and so we we're promoting pot tv more and more we have the new pot tv website we'd really like everyone to help share and spread pot tv around uh, so we can bring you more and more content to more and more viewers if you haven't seen it yet go and check it out pot.tv and cannabisculture.com both have brand new websites and they're very pretty 
They're very pretty, I have types. to say. Yeah. So share those around, guys. And of course, we will be back tomorrow morning. We'll be switching on the live stream as soon as we get here for you guys. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for tonight. But we'll, of course, uh, be back. And um, Pot TV it has shows every day of the week now. If right. it's not from Vancouver, it's from Toronto, from VC. So you as can high always as you can find. get on the net. That's right. Yeah, I think we have another slogan. What's the other Pot TV slogan? Oh, jeez, I don't really know. Trivia question. Uh, There's another Pot TV slogan. Net. Matt tried to steal this as high as you can get on the net <laughs> thing at one time. <laughs> yeah. Higher than the CN Tower. See, that's a good Toronto one for you sure. We have another slogan for Pot TV. And I can't. There, there's a it. slogan for our store, which is everything, everything, everything you need but the weed. The weed. Yeah. yeah. But we'll have to dig it up. Pot TV. Pot, uh, you know what? I can't remember. It looks like no one else. Just one, and you'll be hooked. <laughs> I like that. Ooh, oh, the lights are going They're shutting the down. lights. All right, Time guys. Time to pack up. That's Adios. it for us. Peace and fun. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Love you, Pot TV.